Welcome back to the channel. This is my Metallica concert review. So, if you recall, if you're a regular viewer, been talking about seeing Metallica in St. Louis forever. You know, I don't when since they announced it, you know. So, this is my review. So, I'm going to start my review by saying if you want to feel like a fish out of water, try being a metalhead at a Metallica concert, right? There were not many of me there, right? So, all started, we stopped and ate at a McDonald's halfway to the concert. So, I walk in. I'm wearing my vest, of course. I'm wearing a Sodom shirt the first day. I wanted to wear a shirt. Let me look through my shirts and pick out a band that nobody there probably knows, right? And... That could have been any of my shirts, honestly, you know, because, yeah, it was not, there was no metal heads, you know, very few. I'll talk about, I get, I got two pages of notes. I'll get to that. McDonald's, right? Walk in with my vest and there's like these four dudes at a table, you know, and they got Metallica shirts, right? They're obviously on the way to the concert. They're younger. They're like half my age, right? So I walk in and... The dude sitting there kind of sees me, and he's, like, watching me, like, out of the corner of his eye, like, without moving, like, he's frozen, like, you know. And it's the vest, yeah, I, I, when I wear that vest, there's this machismo, you know, and he could feel it. He was intimidated by my machismo, you know, my battle vest machismo, so, so, yeah, you know, and he, he just, you know, whatever, you know, I go, I get my tri triple cheeseburger I got for some reason. I usually have a double. I said, fuck it, I'm going to splurge and get a triple. So I did. So, get we get there. <clears throat> you know, there's lots of people going in. Just tons of people. Got to go through metal detectors, right? Uh, in line to get in, guy named Eric commented on my vest. Shout out to Eric if you're watching. You know, he, he I told him about my channel. You know, I'm getting better at telling people about my channel. You know, hey, I don't know if they watch, you know. You know, if I've ever told you in person to watch my channel, comment, you know, because I've told like half, half a dozen people, you know, check out my channel. Anyway, I'm rambling. Man, this is going to be terrible. Stick around, though. I got good stuff, I'm telling you. So, yeah, Eric commented on my best. He was familiar with some of the death metal bands and Midnight, you know, he knew. So, yeah, he's a real, real metalhead, right? Trying to get his son, I think he said, in, into more heavier stuff, you know. So, you know, playing that first Deicide album, you know. Anyway, enough of that. So, yeah, you know, not many. I saw a couple guys with obituary shirts, you know. But it's just, you know, not counting the obvious, you know, Metallica shirts, you know. Very few, you know, you see a Ride the Lightning shirt here and there, but it's mostly, you know newer i'm i'm this is I, i'm not even sticking to my notes that's not in my notes right so we get to our seats uh night one wolfgang van halen you know mammoth or whatever they're about halfway through their set they only play like 30 minutes so uh never listened to wolfgang you know my impression great musician you know Great guitarist, nice voice, good good radio shit. You know, that's the kind of stuff I I expect to hear when I turn on like the rock and roll station. You know, I'm not gonna go out of my way to listen to him, but yeah, if it came on the radio, I wouldn't change the channel. That's that's what I say about Wolfgang Van Halen, and that's that's a compliment, by the way, right? If it it, it might sound backhanded, but that's that's all you're gonna get from me, Wolfgang. Uh. I'm, I'm trying to stay on script, right? Uh, yeah, so my nephew, Colby, he starts talking to the dude next to him, who's an older guy, you know? And and this dude's like, you know, the last time, or the, the first time I saw Metallica, it's been 30 years, you know? And he's like bragging, you know, like pumping his chest out like he's, you know, tough guy or whatever. So my nephew's like, yeah, my uncle saw him back then. So this guy's like, you know, because he's leaning to see around Kobe. He's like, when'd you see him? You know, 
And I was like, well, the first time I saw him was in 1986 with, with Cliff Burton. You know, this show's been immortalized on bootleg vinyl. So don't tell Lars. If, Lar if anybody that knows Metallica is watching this, don't tell Lars about this video. Or tell him, I don't care. Anyway, bootleg Metallica show. This was the first time I saw him. Cape Girardeau, Missouri, when I was 16. And then I saw him again in 89, early 89, on the Justice for All tour, right? So, this guy was like, yeah, I saw him after the Black Album came out. I, I'd never heard about him before then, you know. And then he shut the fuck up, you know, because he, he's not bragging. You know, I, I'm bragging. He's he's just, you know, you know, as always, that's cool, you know. But yeah, he's not too friendly to me then after that because, you know, I shut him down or whatever. Anyway, enough about that. So, uh, what's next? Oh, show record. I showed the record. I wrote that show record. Uh, next up, Pantera. Now, was never a huge Pantera fan. Had a couple tapes, like they're big ones. Seems like Joe made copies for me. So I just had copies of a couple. Of them. I listened to them. I didn't hate them. That was that. When I was in my 20s, I used to shave my head. And I didn't have, like, all this. I just, I'm too lazy to shave. I just had, like, a, you know, just like a goatee. And more than one person told me I look like, hey, you look like that dude from Pantera, you know, because nowadays, like, dudes with shaved heads and goatees are like a dime a fucking dozen, right? But back then they weren't, you know? So, yeah, I think that's just, like, the only other bald goatee guy people knew. The guy from Pantera, you know? Yeah, South will rise again. So, uh, yeah, Pantera. Uh... I'm checking my notes. Okay, so here's a clip of Pantera. Just a short clip to kind of give you a taste. Uh, first thing you'll notice, we were really far fucking away. Like, we were uh, like row TT, right? Six rows from the very, very top. Here's here's a picture, here's a selfie, me and Colby, and you can see the very, very top. I'd, I'd rather be with them guys just standing on the top row. You know, that looks like a good time. But yeah, we were like six rows from the very, very top. So yeah, this, this, check it out. Before we go any further, we need to talk about this guy. The guy with the bandana in the front row. If you've ever watched J-Dog, this is like literally the guy he always talks about. You know, what's heavier than Pantera, bro? This is the what's heavier than Pantera, bro guy. He was in the front row seeing Pantera in St. Louis. So yeah, you know. I found that amusing. If you've never watched J Dog, yeah, watch him. I, I the other day I got drunk, and I watched like five J Dog episodes in a row. You know, I had like a J Dog marathon. So yeah. Anyway, enough about that. I'm I'm. This is gonna be fucking. It's almost like eight and a half minutes in. <sighs> All right. So finally, Metallica Night One. 
So they open with Creeping Death. All right, some highlights. Fade to Black, Orion, Seek and Destroy, right? They played three songs off their latest album. Now, you know, you know I'm lukewarm on their latest album. Listen, I streamed it three times, and my best I could muster was I don't hate it, right? Two of the three songs that they played, I really dug, right? So I might have to go back and revisit that record, you know, and see. You know, they're start, starting to grow on me, I guess. So they ended with Master of Puppets. And I heard a couple songs I'd never heard before. Because for those of you that, that are just, that are still here, that have never watched me before, I'm, I'm one of those guys that was with Metallica from the very beginning like two months or three months after Kill 'Em All came out, I bought it. And I've been a fan ever since. And then the Black Album, I cut class. In college, I cut class to go to the record store at the mall when they opened to get the new Metallica album. And that album, the Black Album, I listened to in my car. And I almost cried because I fucking hated it. You know? Couldn't stand it. So... When it comes to Metallica, I just don't bother to check them out. You know, I never listen to Hardwired to Self-Destruct, you know, Load and Reload. You know, I checked out St. Anger, believe it or not. You know, I, I read something like they were returning to the roots. <coughs> They're heavy or whatever. And it was St. fucking Anger. I mean, Jesus, you know. But I listened, downloaded it illegally, you know, because of Lars. This was before streaming, right? So, yeah, here's a clip. This, uh, I want to say, towards the end of the show, they dropped a bunch of giant beach balls from the ceiling, which you'll see in this clip. Now, I just want to go on the record as saying dropping giant beach balls from the ceiling is not very metal, right? I blame Lars. I'm pretty sure that was his idea. Like, hey guys, hey guys, let's drop giant beach balls from the ceiling. Yeah, you know, and they're like, go go practice, Lars. Go practice, you know. But yeah, anyway, check this out. My biggest complaint is just we were so far away, right? But that's my fault. I bought the cheapest tickets, and that's where they were, right? So yeah, not not didn't really dig the round stage. Really, it's like there were times where you couldn't see. You couldn't see. They were like fucking this big. You couldn't really see them anyway. 
But yeah, sometimes they'd walk because you got them giant monitors, you know. And the problem with the monitors, they were great because you're just watching the, the screens, right? Because you could see the band members better. But they had like graphics sometimes for sometimes entire songs where instead of showing the band, they're showing this, you know, animation stuff. And then you have to watch these little fucking guys this big. You know, but yeah, that's my fault. I went with the cheap tickets, you know, would have liked to have been down in the middle, but they were like thousands of dollars, I think, you know. So anyway, anyway, I'm, I'm bitching, right? So, okay, after the show, <clears throat> stop by the restroom, right? So we're waiting in line. There's a line at the restroom, waiting in line. There's vomit on the floor. And I didn't want to take a picture because, you know, people got their wieners out, right? I didn't want somebody to freak out because I'm taking pictures in the restroom. In hindsight, I wish I would have just done it. Like on the way out, got a click and, and then took off or whatever. Somebody yelled at me. I don't know. I don't think people would care if I took pictures of their wieners in the restroom. Anyway, vomit on the floor. No picture to show you. But uh, some dude, he's, he's looking over my vest. He's like, hey, nice vest, man. I'm like, hey, thanks, you know. Thanks a lot. And he's looking it over like he's behind me looking. And he comes back around. And he's like, Venom, man, you're hardcore. And I'm like, yeah, man, I'm hardcore. And it's like, I don't know, like, what's the deal with Venom? What has he heard about Venom? But, but yeah, like, yeah, you know, listen to DSI, dude, if you want to talk about hardcore. But yeah, he recognized Venom. And thought I was hardcore, you know, like respect your hardcore. It's the machismo. Even dudes like like him, you know, he's like a biker looking dude, and he was felt the machismo, you know. So so yeah, that was cool, you know. Ended up next to each other at the urinals, you know, coincidentally, you know. Because you're waiting in line for somebody to leave. And anyway, yeah, uh Yeah, that's page one, right? So, I should mention, beers, $10 for like a regular beer, I guess. Was it, I guess it's like the 12, are those 12 ounce, I guess? Or 16 ounce that look like a bottle, but they're aluminum. I don't fucking know. Anyway, it was those, you know, 10 bucks, which isn't terrible compared to like Merciful Fate. I think it was like 18 or something. Ridiculous. So, yeah. Uh, T-shirts. I predicted t-shirts would cost 60. T-shirts were only 45. So, respect for not charging an arm and a fucking leg. 45, high, but it's not unreasonable. You know, I think 40 I've seen before. It seems like I paid 40 for my dark funeral shirt. But I can't remember for sure. Anyway, here's the thing, though. I walk, I walk down the street, and guess what I ran across? A bootleg. So I got a bootleg Metallica shirt for only 20 bucks, right? And it's got the tour dates and every fucking thing. And I'll be honest, I like this design better than the official design. So $20, Lars, only $20 down the street from the bootlegger, you know, and yeah, he was just, I know like Metallica filed some kind of injunction, you know, to get the cops to enforce, you know, copyright laws and confiscate the bootlegs. This dude was standing in the middle of the street and there were cops just, you know, right there watching, you know, they did not give a fuck that they were selling bootleg shirts, you know. So yeah, Lars. So anyway, let me get back. Uh, came home, drove the two hours home, had a day to recover, because I need a day to recover. I'm old, right? Okay. Sunday night. Less people on Sunday, because it's people got to work, people got to go to school, you know, they can't go out on a Sunday night. So it seemed less crowded. Even going in, a lot less people going through the metal detector. Here's the thing, metal detector, night one, I sit off the metal detector, right? So I'm like, look at the guy, and the guy's like, go on. Didn't check me, you know. So yeah, you know, good job, security. Anyway, I digress. Okay, here, got to the arena. Colby, 
got to use the restroom. I don't. So I stand back, you know, kind of against the wall because it's, you know, walkway. People are walking through like the, you know, it goes all the way around the arena kind of thing. And I'm looking, there's two doors, so you don't know which door they're going to come out of. So I'm just standing back watching, right? This dude is eyeballing me, right, as he's walking past. And he kind of had this Grizzly Adams kind of vibe, you know, with the hair and the beard, like kind of reddish, you know. If you don't know Grizzly Adams, I'll try to find the picture. This Grizzly Adams looking dude, he's wearing a jersey, right? Like a, like a sports looking jersey. It's got like a white knight on it. And it's got some bullshit about, you know, warrior for Jesus, you know. <clears throat> and all this crazy stuff. And he's eyeballing me, right? And I seen, you know, I'm, I got my vest on, you know, my uh, night two, I had a, a cannibal corpse eating back to life shirt. So he's, he's, he's checking me out. He's, he's looking, you know, he's one of these guys, like you ever look into some people's eyes and there's like nothing there, just nothing, right? That's how this guy is like looking at me with his blank eyes, you know? And like, he, 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 he caught me, you know, I'm the guy you're looking for. You know, I guarantee you, you know, and he, he, he just kept walking, right? Now look at the back of his jersey, and it's more nonsense, but I've been put on the earth to, to do the Lord's work, and, and, you know, it's like, it's like a fucking serial killer guy, you know, just waiting to happen. So, yeah, got stared down by the Grizzly Adams, you know, Christian psychopath. Uh, so, night two opened with Ice Nine Kills. Now... I have never listened to Ice Nine Kills before. And I never plan on listening to them again, right? I'm just going to read what I typed. Jesus fucking Christ, they were bad. That's what I put. So this is some like metal core. Like this is like music for teenage girls. I'll just say it. If you're a teenage girl and you like Ice Nine Kills, good job. If you are not a teenage girl and like Ice Nine Kills, bro, come on. Are you serious? You know, I don't know. Ice Nine, they did not impress me, right? They, they had like a horror thing going, which I can appreciate, you know, with the axe chopping somebody's head off on stage. And there was zombies running around. And, and then he did, the, like, the the Bruce Campbell, you know, chainsaw hand kind of thing. But it didn't fit the music. It was like pussy music, you know, with, like, you know, I'm a tough horror movie with, like, you know, I don't know. I just it didn't, didn't fit. You know, in the shtick with the sunglasses and the driving gloves... And the white button-up shirt and the tie. And one guitarist was wearing, like, a bow tie. You know, like, tuxedo kind of get up. And it's like, come on, man. The fuck? So, yeah. So, I'm going to blame Lars for that. I think Lars was like, hey, these guys, they're they're badass. They have zombies on stage. It's like, okay. Like, each, each member got to pick a band. You know, and, like, Lars picked Ice Nine Kills. So, yeah. That's all I'll say about them. So, next up, Five Finger Death Punch. So, never listened to them before. Heard the name, you know. I think I saw a video on YouTube, like, their vocalist is, like, the most hated man in metal or whatever. I don't know. I never watched it because I don't listen to them. But, yeah, I don't know. I am going to go on the record. As far as arena rock shows go, which is what this was. This was an arena rock show, right? They were good. I enjoyed them. You know, there were a couple songs that actually sounded kind of heavy, you know. There was, he was good with the crowd, you know, great, you know, talking to the crowd, good, good stage banter, you know, I thought. Like, you know, he seems good at that. Didn't hate him. Not going to buy their records. But just like Wolfgang, if they came on the radio, I'd enjoy it. You know, it's good enough, right? So there was this one part where, like, the, the singer was like, 
burn, motherfucker, burn, motherfucker, burn. And then the crowd would say, burn, motherfucker, burn, motherfucker, burn, you know. And it was like a fucking rock show, you know. But, yeah, seriously, though, that was a joke. You know, I mean, they really did that, but, you know, fuck. Rock, rock and roll, you know, I can dig that. And I think they did a great job. And that's what I'll say about Five Finger Death Punch. Didn't, like I said, I never listened to them, so I didn't recognize any songs. So, last up, Metallica, Night 2. So, they opened with Whiplash, ended with Enter Sandman. They played For Whom the Bell Tolls, Ride the Lightning, Call of Cthulhu, and Welcome Home Sanitarium. Classic stuff. And they played other stuff, too. They played, like, three more songs from the new album, and, you know, I don't, you know, I, I listened to the Black Album just the one time, the day it came out, you know, and, and I hear it, though. You hear that shit all over the place, you know, wrestling and whatnot. So, yeah, I've heard a lot of it, even though I just actually listened to it the one time. So, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to end. Am I going to end? No, I'm not going to end. Cut that out. So, I have no complaints. You know, other than Ice Nine Kills, I enjoyed everything, you know. I haven't been to, like, an arena show, like, since I was a teenager. So I don't really know. You know, I'm used to going to club shows. Arena shows, I don't know. It was not too loud, you know. I, I used earplugs because I'm old and I got to protect my hearing. But, yeah, I left them out for, like, the first half of Metallica on the first night. And then I finally put them in. But no, it was, you know, I can't judge arena shows, you know. Anyway, I'm just going to enjoy both nights, you know. Kind of, I was kind of split on the playing two nights kind of thing. Glad they did because you got to hear so much more of the good stuff, you know. Only problem with the two nights as I lived two hours away, right? So I was on the road like a total of eight hours over the weekend, you know, and I can't blame Lars for that. That's my fault. So, yeah, I'm going to end with a couple random clips. And, yeah, that's it. I'm going to end with a couple random clips, you know. If you're still watching... I should add, no, fuck it. I'm going to keep talking. No problems, you know. I didn't see any fights or anything. Everybody was well-mannered, you know. You know, I mean, that the Grizzly Adams guy might have ended up killing somebody, you know, before he left. You know, for being a sinner or whatever, you know. But, <clears throat> I don't, nothing, nothing against serial killers, I guess. You know, everybody's got a friend, I think. I know I do. Everybody's got that one friend that if they got up in the morning and they turned on the TV and they saw his mugshot and said he was arrested for being a serial killer, you'd be like, yeah, yeah, I can see that. You know, I've got a friend like that. Maybe, you know, if you do too, you know, let us know in the comments. But yeah, I got that friend. And uh yeah, I don't know. He he'd be the kind of guy, I won't say his name, you know, but he'd be that kind of guy that would go to like the seedier side of town and like kill a hooker, you know, cuz he's ridding the world of hookers or whatever. You know, he'd be that kind of guy, I think. So so, yeah, nothing against him, like the guy. If he went to prison, I'd write to him, you know, and call him. I think you can call, you know, collect call from prison kind of thing. But, uh, yeah, just I don't know why I brought that up, you know. Hmm. Was I going somewhere? Oh, the I was just thinking about the Grizzly Adam guy. Yeah, no. No fights that I saw. Everybody's funny. Like, you go on fucking social media and everybody's screaming and ranting and raving and calling people names and stuff. And it's like, you go to, like, Metallica concert and everybody just gets along, you know? 
Nobody was arguing. Nobody, everybody was polite. You know, I don't know. It's almost like social media is not real life, huh? Yeah. I don't know. I got really nothing else to talk about, I guess. I was going to ramble a little bit. But, you know, drinking beer. Recording this on a Saturday night. I don't know. I guess I'm running out of things to say. I'm going to, I I picked out, you know, I got a stack of stuff for a collection update. And I decided to, like, not do all of it. I'm just going to do, like, a half a stack. So I pulled out some stuff. Here's the problem. I got a couple tapes that I need to listen to. And my tape player, which I bought used off of eBay, it ate a tape the other day. So now I'm afraid to use it. You know, it's like, I don't know. I need to just buy one, but I can't afford one. I like my, the, the only one I see new on Amazon is like that pile, which is some off brand that nobody's ever heard of, right? It's like they make a tape deck. I don't know. The problem with old ones is you don't know. You know, like when I got it, the reverse button didn't work. Everything worked on it except the reverse button. Like it won't go in. So who the fuck even knows? So, and, and it's like, for what, somebody would probably charge you to repair it if you could find somebody. You could buy a new one for, you know, like a hundred, whatever, 150 bucks or, or whatever they, they charge on Amazon for that pile one, you know. But, you know, the problem I was going to say with used ones is like, this one may could just be clean and maybe the, I don't know about the button, but maybe clean it. Like, I didn't really clean it much. Well, I didn't clean it really at all. Yeah. I read how, I googled it, and I read how to clean it, and I never did. So maybe I could just clean it. And say, but now I'm still afraid. You know, even if I clean it, maybe if I clean it and I see it's really dirty, then I'll be okay using it. And this is not even interesting jibber-jabber. This is like nonsense jibber-jabber. So yeah, this is it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to wrap up. So I don't know if that was good, you know. But, you know, what am I going to say? It was fucking Metallica. Third time seeing Metallica. It was a good time. So, yeah, they're still there touring in the next year, you know. So, yeah, if you've not had the chance or if you're, that doesn't sound right. If they're going to play near you in the future and you've been on the fence, I think it was worth going to, you know. Like I said, if, if I didn't have to travel so far, if they're playing like in a town you live in, 100% for sure go. You know, if you got to travel, that's up to you, you know. Anyway, thanks for watching. Be back soon. Give me a like. Like, 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 like. Thank you.